Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I will show you how to make fire in Blender. Realistic fire scenes. I recently released my series Lost in the Waves where I had a fire scene. So I thought I wanted to do a breakdown of that scene. Well, not that exact scene, but a scene that looks like it and hopefully everyone can follow along. Today I will give you tips on how to keep the render time low and genuinely be kind to your computer. So hopefully everyone can follow along. Thank you so much for the support for my new series Lost in the Waves. It means the world to me. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I spent quite a long time making it, so hopefully you will enjoy it. Let's just jump right into the tutorial. This is the scene that we'll be turning into a fire scene today. First we'll add some fire planes to the scene, and after that we will add in some fog and some smoke. Then we will add some particles to give it some more dynamic life. And in the end we will add in the sauce, which is the lens flare. But before we get to that, let me just show you how we got to the starting point. So you can just relax for now and enjoy some quick tips and tricks. Let's go. This is the scene I started out with. It's just a basic setup with a house and a flat plane. All the assets in this video are from Blender Kit, which is a free extension for Blender. So if you don't already have it, you should just go and grab it because it's free. But don't worry, I'm gonna leave a link for this project in the description so you can follow along. I guess I wanted to show this part of the tutorial because usually I would just work from the finished scene and then do the tutorial. But I wanted to show you how I got to this point, all the thoughts I had about it. For example, here I'm trying to figure out the camera angle, which took a lot of time. And I want to show you that part of the process. Let me know if you enjoyed this part of the tutorial. I think it's fun, but let me know in the comments. So right now I'm adding in some particle systems for the ground plane in the back. I'm adding in grass and some trees, and once again, it's just assets from the Blender Kit extension. I decided that this scene should be a night scene, and I want to share a little tip about that. Usually when you're rendering out a day scene, you really have to pay attention to all the details because most of the shot is exposed. But when you're doing a night scene, most of the shot is not exposed. You have parts that are completely black or almost black, which means that you can pay a little less attention to some of the details and this can save you a ton of geometry. In this scene, for example, I don't have that many trees in the background. And this is because it very quickly becomes so black that you can't even see that far. And because of this, I save a lot of geometry. So let's say you have a hard time rendering because of your computer being bad. You can just do night scenes and still get great results. I personally love night scenes because I can keep the render time really low and then just do a lot of fun scenes instead of one that takes three days to render. So that was how we got to this point, let the tutorial begin. Chapter 1, the fire. So this is the scene we're starting with. I start by pressing shift A and add in a mesh plane, which is basically the old images as planes. And this is the image sequence that I will be importing. It's basically just fire with a black background. But don't worry, this will already be included in the project files. I then go into the shading tab. Because if we try to render this out in cycles, you will see nothing. And this is because the plane is not yet emitting any light. So we have to connect the color output to the color of the emission shader and then increase the strength. I then jump over to the viewport shading mode. And then I just start to duplicate the fire around the house by pressing Shift D and then just placing it different places where I think it would look cool and places where I think there would be fire if the house was on fire, I guess. <laughs> But you have to be careful and always place the fire towards the camera since it's just a 2D plane and we want to keep the illusion of 3D. Right now it's just the same image sequence that we've duplicated around a couple of times. So we want to offset the animation so it looks like different fires. I start by selecting all the fire planes, pressing M on the keyboard to create a collection and renaming it fire planes. Right now all the fire planes have the same material applied. That means if I make a change to one plane it will affect them all. So I press this little icon to make an instance or a copy of the same material. Then I press the little number on the image sequence and then I can change the offset value on all the different planes. In this way I get different fires with the same image sequence. Brilliant! And if we look at a viewport render, this is what we got so far. Let's move on to chapter 2. Smoke and lighting. I start by hiding the fire plane collection because we won't need it for a while. If I wanted to add smoke to the scene, I could just add in an object, add a quick smoke effect and make the house a collision object. But I actually found out that it looked better if I made the whole house a smoke object. So I select the house, press F3 on the keyboard and search for quick smoke effect. 
and then just apply it. You will now have a domain box, which is the box, and then you'll have the fluid physics added to the house with some basic settings. And we don't really have to change a lot in the settings. Change the resolution to 128. You can also do 64 if you have a bad computer. Check on adaptive domain, but also check the noise. Set the mode to modular, make it resumable and change it to unicache since it's faster. Then we want to make the smoke start before the scene begins, so we already have smoke in the scene. And since our animation is only 150 long, so should the smoke simulation be. Then I just pressed on bake and waited. And this took around 10 minutes on my computer, but it might vary depending on your CPU. But remember, you can always lower the resolution if it's too demanding for your computer. Then you also need to bake the noise, otherwise you won't see the smoke. And this is what I got. I think it looks pretty good. I then jumped into the shading tab and I went into the object properties and changed it from wire mode to solid, just so it's easier to see what's going on. If we then jump into cycles, we can see this is what we got so far. And it doesn't look bad at all, but if we want to see what's going on, we can add in some light in the scene. This is just a basic HDRI I've put in the background, but if you just increase the strength of the world lighting, you will almost get the same result. Then you just have to play around with the density setting. I think I landed on something like 0.5, and I thought that looked good. I then changed the density of the fog as well, because if there is fire in the scene, then there should be heavy smoke around it. And I think I landed on 0.05 for the fog, and I thought that looked very good. I then unhided the fire collection so we can see the planes again, because now we have to play around with the lighting. I also decreased the lighting of the world to zero, so it's completely black in the background. I then pressed Shift A and added in an area lamp, which I placed behind the house so it was facing towards the camera. This will work as a backlight, which will create a cool rim light effect on the house, which I think looks very cinematic. I set the power of the light to around 5000, and I changed the color to an orange tint. And if we jump over to cycles, we can see how it looks so far. I think it looks amazing, but now we want to add a little effect to the light in the background. We want it to flicker a little bit. So press I on the power, and then we want to open up the graph editor. With the graph editor opened and with the area lamp selected, you want to press on the power and then add the noise modifier. Then we can change the scale. That means how often the flickering is going to happen. And I'm going to set that to around 10 frames. And then I'm going to set the strength to 5000. This will give a nice little subtle flickering effect. Let's move on to chapter 3, Particles. I start by pressing Shift A and add in a plane, which will be our emitter object. I then apply a particle system to the plane. And just for now, I'm going to hide the smoke collection and the ground plane collection, since that will just be taking up memory and we want to see the particle system in real time. I then press Shift A and add in an icosphere. Under the base settings, I change the subdivisions to 1. I then rename the icosphere Fire Particle. Back in the particle settings, I change it from Path to Object and then I search for the Fire Particle. And just like that, it's firing out small icospheres. You then want to set the scale randomness to 1. And for the final render, we want the scale to be 0.01 for the particles. But just so we can see what is going on, let's just keep it at 0.06 for now. But just remember to change it for the final render. Then we want to play around with the drag and the damp setting. The damp setting is the most important one, and that is the one that is slowing down the particles. And I ended up with around 0.5 for that setting. I then scaled up and repositioned my particle system. I changed the number to around 150, and then I changed the frame start to around minus 50, just so we have particles in the beginning of the scene. I then pressed Shift A and added in a turbulence force field, and then I replaced it inside the particles. I then went under the physics tab of the turbulence field, and I played around with the settings until I got something that I was satisfied with. But here are the final settings, 20 for the strength, 5 for the size, and 1 for the flow. I then duplicated the particle system by pressing Shift D and placing it on the left side of the camera. Under the particle settings, I pressed this little button, which creates an instance of the same particle system. So now if I change the settings, I don't affect my old particle system. I then selected my old particle system and under field weights, I decreased the wind value to zero. I then pressed Shift A and added in a wind force field. And I simply decreased the wind value on our old particle system so it won't be affected by the wind. I then simply changed the strength of the wind to around 20, and that was it. But if we open up cycles, you'll see nothing. And that is because we haven't assigned any material to the icosphere. So select the icosphere and create a new material. Press Shift A and add in an emission shader. 
connect the emission to the surface output and change the strength to around 16. Change the color to an orange tint. And if we render that out, we have particles! Alternatively, you could set up a similar scene just with the particle systems and the force fields with a black background and render it out. This way we get an image sequence that we can then take into your favorite software and overlay it on top of your footage. Set the blend mode to add or screen and then you have particles also. This way you'll save the memory in your scene and can just add it in post. Let me know if you want me to create a collection of different overlays that you can just download and add to your projects. Maybe I'll sell it for one or two dollars or something like that. Let me know in the comments. Chapter 4. The Lens Flare This is actually a quite simple setup. Press Shift A and add in a point lamp. Change the color to an orange tint and the strength to around 80. But it doesn't really matter for now. Duplicate it and place one on each side of the camera. Press Shift A again and add in a cube. Scale it up so it fills the whole scene. Change the material from a principled shader to a principled volume and connect it to the volume socket. Set the density to around 0.1. With the point lamp selected, you want to press I on the power. This way you set a keyframe. Under the graph editor you want to select the power and add a noise modifier. Change the scale to around 10 and play around with the strength. This way we get a flickering effect for the point lamp. And this is the result when you've done it with both of the lamps. I then pressed Shift A and added in a mesh plane, which is the old images as planes. And I added this image which I created. In the shading panel, I added the color to the color of the emission and increased the strength of the emission. I then scaled the plane so it fitted the camera view. I decreased the emission strength to around 4. I then pressed I to set a keyframe for the emission strength and under the graph editor, I once again added in a noise modifier. I gave it the same settings as the point lamps, just so it will flicker at the same time. And this is the result. I then rendered it out as an image sequence and imported it to DaVinci Resolve, where I used it as an overlay. I set the blend mode to add, and then I could play around with the opacity until I got a result that I liked. Once again, let me know if you want me to create these overlays as a package which you can download. Congratulations, you're done. Thank you guys so much for watching. That was it for this video. Hopefully you learned something. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.